Today we are in Ocala, and behind us is Fort King National Historic Landmark. We've been here one time like three years ago, yep. just passing through. Yep. So we're coming back. I don't really remember what it is. I mean, obviously it's a fort, but we'll, we'll learn more. Let's go check it out. You can see right here, Fort King has been designated National Historic Landmark. 2004. Here it is, right here. You can go inside. It says the Archaeology Resource Center is open today. There's the little site over there. We do have a visitor center that way, but we're going to go ahead and enter in here. I do remember there are like a bunch of little information pieces inside of here. So that's what we're going to go look at getting ready to enter the fort. Oh! <laughs> Here's what it looks like on the inside. Where do we start? Over here? The sun? <laughs> What's this say? Oh! Start this way? Okay. You can see you can like walk up there not a very big fort we'll go read some of these all right it says where do we start here it's the Seminole War wars. Seminole Wars were three related military conflicts in Florida between the Seminole and the United States so this fort was here for the Seminole Wars. There's the first Seminole War. I'll just kind of keep the phone right here. So if you want to pause and read about it, you can. So it wasn't really involved in that then, right? Doesn't seem like it was. So that's the first one. The second one. Mm. Fort King. Hey, Fort, hey Cooper. Fort Cooper. We've done a video at Fort Cooper. So the second one was where this fort was involved. And I guess the third one, what about the third one? There's not really the third one. I don't know if there's really any order to these little informational signs. So we're just gonna now head to this one over here. There's American flag over there. Don't know how well you can see that. Next one, another overview of it in here. It was a hard life at Fort King. Look at all of them, those who died while stationed at Fort King. Florida was a hostile and difficult environment. There's the food rations. Okay, so they're saying for those who were in, used to the northern climate, the heat, insects, and animals were unfamiliar to the soldiers. So it was very hard on them. Oh, well, that's interesting. Just... Oh, it tells what the cause died. of death. What do you got? You got disease, killed by Indians, wounds. Fevers. Man. Cause of death killed. So I guess they don't know how that guy died. He just was killed. Chronic diarrhea. <laughs> Yikes. No, that would be awful. Can we open that? Look at this. Oh, did we? Oh, and you can go up. This is kind of cozy. I feel like, and I could be wrong, but there was a little bit of reno done in here. I don't feel yeah, like, <laughs> I don't feel like it's original. No. See, they were, they would overlook that way, over this way. It reminds me of the little, um, yeah. what am I gonna say? Tom Sawyer. How'd you know? Tom Sawyer, Tom Sawyer Island at 
Magic Kingdom. The little play fort thing? Yeah. Huh. Is that a trail back there? I don't know, but I, I wouldn't be very good at this job. <laughs> I mean, those trees were probably look like that. I would say it even came up maybe even closer. Well, yeah, I'm sure. Back down to the ground level. December 28th, 1835, attack on Fort King. There's a graphic account of the attack on Wiley Thompson. Only one of 110 soldiers survived the deadly attack. This is, must be the Dade Massacre. Imagine being that one. And a couple more. This is interesting. I don't know anything about this, but it almost looks like pieces were cut. I could be totally wrong here, but like for maybe their rifles or something? Because if you keep looking, there's different little cuts in the wood all throughout here. If anybody knows if that's true or not, comment below, but it's kind of got a pattern going on let's see treaty of Payne's landing and then if we move over to this one how do you say that Maltry Creek the treaty of Maltry Creek and if we just turn again you can see what it looks like in here I think we're gonna go out that way now. Walking out these gates. It does look like there's trails or something all throughout here. I will say that's a lot bigger than the time we came yeah. three years ago. Ooh, the Fort King Road. It was a necessity. Actually, there's couple more signs. Fort King has played a key role in Florida in Marion County history. A tale of two forts. The first Fort King was burned to the ground by the Seminole in 1836. And if we turn around here, Look at this site they've got. Archaeological site. Wow. Wonder what they've found. Right here, Fort King. Again, I'm just gonna try to put the phone up that you could pause and read if you wanna find out more. And then this is the visitor center. Looks like all they have is porta potties. And then on down they've got a little like pavilion i think when we came the first time they had like a bunch of gardens over here i'm not sure let's go explore it's getting pretty windy out here not sure the significance of this pavilion but got a little brochure visitor center is maybe is that fridays and saturdays 10 to 5 because I know it said this, the Fort King stays open until like dusk. There is trails. Archaeology Visit Resource Center opening fall 2020, so it is open. That's true. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is over there. And if we turn this way. Oh yeah, there's the gardens i remember those we came though when did we come march yeah so of 2020. they had stuff that were like growing i don't think there's probably anything growing right now not going to do any of the trails today but here is the welcome center might be kind of awkward to film in here they are not closed yet let's just see what it looks like in here timeline there are restrooms in here too sounds like they got a visit a video going huh. 
Hello. We just learned all about this howitzer cannon. Very cool. It took 16 people to man it. You had 10 in the back in case somebody came down. We didn't film it because it was a really cool conversation we were having, but you can see there's the cannons. That's 12 pounds right there. So that's a reproduction, but it's an 1840 or something like that, he said. And this room has like actual <laughs> items they have found. There's a movie in there that's like 10 minutes, but we're gonna skip that because we're gonna get a tour from an archeologist of the building that we showed you earlier. If you come and visit, I recommend them explaining that to you. That was really cool. So we are heading over to the archeological building right now. This is an actual archeologist we're going with. Yeah, so he explained that they found, what, that's where the old blacksmith area. area was and they're gonna rebuild it. We're getting ready to walk over here with them. Archaeological Resource Center. All right, we are back outside. That was so much information. It was awesome. Oh, I yeah. didn't really film in there because there was another couple we didn't know in there. I didn't want to be rude. And we just wanted to listen to see what, um, I think his name is Don, who's an archaeologist. Yeah, he said he's... His daughter found that. I tried to show it, but the little Andrew, Andrew Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, that was. there's only one other one known to survive. And it was for his campaign. And did you show it in there? I did. I okay. I, I did do some little clips, like, yeah. prior to him talking. Yeah. And I tried to show a little bit of, like, the buttons in the beginning. There were yeah. some nails. Um, there were the bottles. The bottles story was really good. But he did. He, he was awesome. Yeah. So very, very him. awesome. And then going back to the site here, yep. he was saying that... The show Forged in Fire, mm -hmm. there's someone on that show that has been out here and they're going to recreate what the blacksmith shop, shop looked like. And they'll do like um, classes. And, yeah. mm -hmm. and then they said if they can get a grant, the place where they saw all the bottles or found yeah. them all is like a storage place. So, they can then so then they can that do that as well. Yeah. Now, I also didn't film much when we were inside the actual welcome center because as soon as we came in, he was there and he just started talking about everything. And I didn't want to really be creepy and be like, hold on, can we just film you? So I recommend coming out and having someone explain everything. I think in there I mentioned the cannon. He went into full detail about the cannon, which was really cool. It was reproduction. They bought it from someone that was um, like collecting them. I think he said it's an 1840 or something. Mm -hmm. And he was just explaining how it works with um, the process. The process. He, he let us hold a 12 pound cannon ball, yeah. which was heavy. Yeah. And then 16 people operated it and you could fire at least two times within 60 seconds. The fastest that he actually, what? Yeah, no, oh, I was just gotcha. saying that it's crazy. Crazy, he asked, yeah. He explained the process and then he said, okay, how, how long do you think it would take to get one round off? And I was like, well, for me, 20 minutes, because I already don't know the steps. But he said that they, when he, he did like um, revolutionary, or no, yeah, revolutionary war reenactments. Yeah. And um, they could do, how many did he One say? every 14 seconds. One every 14 seconds. Yeah. So it was pretty unbelievable. Again, the front section of the Welcome Center was like reproductions. The back was all real, and then just having them tell us the process of firing one of those, pretty cool. Again, 16 people, there was like 
six at the actual cannon, mm -hmm. 10 behind the cannon. So if one went down, what do you do? Replacement. You replace it. Again, sometimes it's very hard to film in situations like that. I kind of want to um, respect everybody's like experience. Yeah, and experience. They want to learn about it too. So I, we tried to do what we could, but I definitely recommend it's free. Come out oh, here yeah. and look at it and let them tell you about yeah, everything. I'm happy to like take us around. Explain everything. Yeah. I mean, he said that obviously he did digs here. His daughter has found, his daughter's the one that found that Andrew Jackson yeah. thing. Um, I think his name, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, Don, I think <laughs> his name was. So, I mean, very helpful. And then there was another lady that was in the visitor center that was very like knowledgeable and helpful too. So it was really cool that. I got more out of it definitely this time. Yeah. Than the I don't last think any of it was open last time though, was right. it? Yeah. So very cool. They're willing to help. A lot of information to take in. They, there was also a 10 minute video, which we skipped because he was going to go down there and show some of those um, little artifacts they had found. So we just said, hey, we'll skip the video for now and follow you down there and listen to the different stories he had. That was our trip out to Fort King, which it was great doesn't take too long, but you could literally stay here a couple hours and listen to them explain stuff, walk around. There's trails. Everything was fun. I really enjoyed it. Dawn was very, very, very helpful. Yeah, the archaeology center was the coolest part. Yeah, some of those items. Like I said, hopefully I got enough that you could actually see, but I didn't ask if you... I'm, I'm sure you could take pictures and film, but like I said, I, I just didn't... I said you could Yeah, and I just didn't want to interrupt him. I know he was... Like, it was fun listening, not filming, mm -hmm. so recommend coming out if you're in the Ocala area. With that being said, that does it for today. Thanks for watching.